brutal beasts bred to bite bodies and break bones. Here today, we will be discovering Roman war dogs. Roman civilization was almost perpetually at war throughout its massive 2000 year plus reign. To the north, they fought the Ostrogoths, the Visigoths, Vandals, Franks, and Saxons. To the south, Carthage, Numidia, Kush, and Mediterranean pirates. And to the east, Parthia, Sassanids, Armenians, and steppe nomads. Throughout the decades of conflict and conquest, the Romans had a loyal companion, the Roman war dog. Weighing in at an estimated 90 kg or 200 pounds, the Molossian was a favourite among the early Roman legion. Originally, the Molossian was an agricultural guard dog. It bears the name of its founding breeders, the Molossian tribe of Epirus, themselves a hybrid of Greeks and Illyrians. Aristotle writes in the 4th century BC, Besides the donkeys, Epirus produces animals who grow thick and large all over, and so do the dogs. By the end of the Greek colonization period, 500 BC, the Molossian had found its way to Rome. Here, the Romans being ever practical, bred it for war. Although, it also found its way into many other areas of the Roman world, such as entertainment in the Colosseum. It was said that four Molosseans could best a tiger. In the arena, on the hunt, and likely on the battlefield, they sported a hardened leather, spiked or studded collar, just like this one. On the battlefield, they also wore armour. Can you just imagine facing up against a 200 pound dog in full Roman armour? Over the course of several hundred years of selective breeding and interbreeding with local Italian dogs, a new breed emerged, the Cane Corso. This breed was similar to the old breed, and still filled all the same societal niches. Maybe the difference between the Dutch and Afrikaans languages could be a contemporary, parallel comparison. Carne Corso fought on the battlefield. Some reports even say they were trained to fight in formation. Others say they protected the individual soldier they were attached to. The latter is probably more likely, as the breed is well known to be fiercely loyal and protective. In fact, its very name translates as Guard Dog. Tactically, Carne Corso were used as shock troops, their purpose being to disrupt enemy lines. An extreme case of this was recorded by Greek writer Polybius. He writes that buckets of flaming oil were strapped to the backs of the dogs. The dogs were then released into the enemy line of cavalry. The burning oil seared the underbellies of the horses, causing mass panic. Carne Corso were useful to the military off the battlefield too. They were almost certainly used as guard dogs within the camp. Foraging was an essential task for the armies of antiquity. Perhaps the dogs assisted the foraging parties in finding food and hunting game. Given the importance of communication and warfare, there is a high likelihood that some were trained as messenger dogs. Lastly, they would have been extremely useful in countering guerrilla warfare tactics, as they could track enemies and find their camps. This breed actually still exists today, if you would like to get your hands on one. Other notable Roman dog breeds, which may have been part of the Roman war machine, are Vertricus and the Malatin. Vertricus is a breed akin to the modern greyhound. Its usefulness lies in its ability to track and hunt small prey, and maybe even humans. The Greek poet 
Gratius writes of Vertricus, It is swifter than thought, or a winged bird. The Melaton, on the other hand, was a small dog, which was associated with the upper class. Its utility was in the field of companionship, warmth, and drawing away fleas from the owner. It appears that Roman war dogs were not simply brutal beasts, bred to bite bodies and break bones. But rather, they were much more versatile, filling a variety of roles wherever usefulness could be obtained. What tasks do you think the Roman war dogs helped with? What would you do if you came up against a war dog in battle? Feel free to share your thoughts in the comments section below, and like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video. And just for a bit of postscript, here is my puppy. She's going to the vet for dental surgery soon. I think her new royal nickname will be Nova the Toothless.